It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. The last couple of sessions, uh, I've been telling you I'll be doing a debate on June 19th at Midway Presbyterian Church in Powder Springs, Georgia with Jim Fletcher. Uh, Jim Fletcher uh, is, has been, spent 20 years in the publishing uh, business as, as a writer and has a new book out called It's the End of the World uh, as We Know It and I Feel Fine. Now, Jim Fletcher and I disagree vehemently on uh, what we uh, are for different perspectives on, on the end times. He's a dispensational premillennialist. He believes that we are living on the cusp of some end time event. And so when he says it's the end of the world as we know it and he feels fine, it's because uh, the rapture is near and he's gonna, God's going to take us out of the world. Uh, and my perspective is quite different. I believe that the majority of Bible prophecies uh, relate to not the end of our world, but the end of the old covenant era, the end of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the world of, of, of animal sacrifices, the physical temple, human priesthood that needed their own sacrifices and, and uh, to, uh, to take care of their sin. Uh, that world is gone. Uh, what has replaced it is the person and work of Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus Christ that our sins are forgiven. It is our, in Christ that our, we have a new position with God. Jesus is our mediator. Uh, he serves between uh, uh, the Father and us as the propitiation for our sins. He's covered our sins. He's taken those sins away from us on the cross. He says it is finished. Uh, and all, all of those things are bound up in the person and work of Jesus Christ. If you look at, at uh, Luke chapter 24, Jesus goes through the entire Old Testament and focused on uh, showing that the focus of the Old Testament was upon him, wasn't upon the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel was put in place because it was through the nation of Israel that the seed line would continue uh, uh, culminating in, in Jesus Christ himself. This is why the genealogies in Matthew and uh, Luke are so important, verifies who Jesus is. But how do you deal with certain language in Scripture uh, that addresses this idea of the end of all things. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, it says, The end of all things is at hand, therefore be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Now, how could Peter say this? The end of all things is at hand. Now, each and every time in the New Testament when the word at hand or near is used, it always refers to something that's near, that's at hand. That's what the word uh, at hand means. It means it's, it's close by. Now, futurists see that particular passage and they say, well, it can't really mean the end of all things is, is, is at hand because the end of all things didn't pass away uh, soon after Peter made this particular statement. Now, if the Bible is the best interpreter of itself, and it is, if you, want, if you want to know what I believe about something, who is the best interpreter of my work? Well, I am. If you want to know what I believe about something, read what I have to say. If you have questions about what I, what I have written, then give me a call or send me an email. I'd be glad to, to answer those, those questions for you. That's the same thing with the Bible. The Bible is the best interpreter of itself. So when, when Peter says the end of all things is at hand, and we know that when the word at hand is used in Scripture, it refers to something that's proximate, that's something that's on the, on the horizon, we then have to take a, a better understanding of what all things is all about. And so if you go back to the, and, and understand that uh, this idea of, of all things in, in, in Scripture doesn't necessarily mean every absolute thing. In fact, this can't mean even for the futurist that there's a time when uh, the end of all things is going to take place. Uh, that just that isn't even possible within in their system. And so when they when they see the phrase the end of all things is at hand and they futurize this, they know that not everything is going to pass away. Now, can you back that up biblically? Well, you can. Uh, and let me take you to a couple of places. The first the first place I want to take you is to Psalm. Uh, chapter 18, and, and, the, and Psalm 18 is interesting in that it has a header telling us what the psalm is about. Psalm 18, 
for the choir director, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spoke to the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. So this particular psalm is a description of what happened to David uh, as, as Saul opposed him and his enemies opposed him. And I want you to look at verse 7 of Psalm 18. Then the earth shook and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains were trembling and were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went up out of his nostrils and fire from his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He, he uh, bowed the heavens also and came down with thick darkness under his, in, under his feet. And he, made, and he rode upon a cherub and flew, and he sped upon the wings of, of the wind. He's, he made uh, darkness his hiding place, his canopy around him, darkness of waters, thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him past the, his thick clouds, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. And he sent out his arrows and scattered them and lightning flashes in abundance and routed them. Then the channels of water appeared and the foundations of the world were laid bare at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. And it goes on with this description of what seems to be end of the world type language. And yet in reality, uh, you'll see here that this is simply a description of what happened to David uh, at the hand of Saul and at the hand of his enemies. And, and yet he paints a picture of nearly total desol desolation. You'll see something similar in the book of Zephaniah. The book of Zephaniah is written in the days of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah. So this is written during the time of, of Judah and going into the Babylonian captivity. Uh, verse 4 says, And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place in the names of the idolatrous priests along with, along with the priests and those who bow down on, on, the, uh, on the housetops to the host of heaven. Verse 7, Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is near. For the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. Verse 14, Near is the great day of the Lord, near and coming very quickly. Listen, the day of the Lord, in, in it the warrior cries out bitterly. The day of wrath is that day, a day of terrible trouble and distress, a day of destruction and desolation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and battle cry against the fortified cities and the, and the high corner towers. And I will bring dis distress on men so that they will walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood will be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. And so what you, what you he have here is this apocalyptic language describing what's going to happen to Judah dur uh, in, during the time of the Babylonian captivity. Uh, and we read the very first, first uh, chapter of, of Daniel and we see this as the case. Judah is, is, uh, comes under the domination of Nebuchadnezzar. Now look at the next verse, verse 18, of Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 18. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to deliver them on the day of the Lord's wrath, and all the earth will be devoured in the fire of his jealousy, for he will make a complete end, indeed a terrifying one, of all the inhabitants of the earth. Now even if the word, the Hebrew word here, Eretz, is translated as land in terms of the land of Israel, you still see this total devastation. He will make a complete end. All of the inhabitants of the land, uh, all of the land will be devoured. And yet we know that, that it didn't happen in that literal fashion. Uh, just like in, in Exodus chapter, in, in uh, Psalm chapter 18, uh, these things, the things that he depicts, David depicts, did not happen to him uh, regarding the, uh, the, his, his battle with Saul and his enemies. And so when Peter says in 1 first, in first Peter chapter 4, verse 7, the end of all things is at hand, Peter is drawing this type of apocalyptic language, which was for something that was local, it was so, something for a very particular period of time, and he was applying it to the old covenant order that passed away when Jerusalem was destroyed in A.D. 70.
Gary DeMar and American Vision are excited to present this year's Worldview Super Conference in Marietta, Georgia, this July 21st through 24th. For more information, visit conference.americanvision.org. That's conference.americanvision.org.